Vekoma has a long, painful history in coasters. Going back to 1979, in America, they're basically boomerangs, SLCs, a flyer here and there, and family coasters. But in Europe and Asia, over the last 10 years, it's been a different story. Today, let's showcase Vekoma's new and improved catalog and rank them up based on prime ride time. This is New Age Vekoma by the numbers. For this list, I'm just looking at the extreme coaster models they've introduced since 2009. So no family flyers, no new SLCs or boomerangs. Also, with the help of Google Maps and the Pythagorean theorem, I was able to take out all the non-prime ride track. This is the final brakes, the station, and the lift hill, though some of these rides don't have one. This will make the length and the pacing stat more fair. Prime ride time is the moment the first car starts picking up speed off the lift hill, or when the launch starts, all the way until it hits the final brakes. In 11th place with 27 seconds is Stingray, a flying coaster at the Giant Wheel Park of Suzhou in China. This was the first of their New Age coasters, a very different take on their Flying Dutchman, with a vertical lift hill and a super compact plot, and this was the only one ever built. It does stand 6 in height, without much of a drop to speak of, so its 46.6 miles per hour top speed is dead last, and no surprise that its prime ride track is nearly 500 feet behind the next lowest coaster on the list. Since it never really gets going, cramming all of its elements into a tiny space. The pacing also brings up the rear, just over 38 feet per second. In 10th place with 28 seconds is Formula, a space warp at Energylandia in Poland. When you think of New Age Vekoma, this really kicked off the movement. It stands 81 feet at its tallest point, which is the giant sidewinder after the launch, putting it in 9th place, also 9th in speed, and is just ahead of Stingray in length in 10th place. It may be a short ride, but it's among the best paced, ranking 4th staying low to the ground after that giant sidewinder. In ninth place with 38 seconds is the Hyper Space Warp models, Celestial Gauntlet and Flying Dragon in China. This debuted in 2019 with two installments. Based off the Space Warp model we just talked about with Formula, the middle of each ride is exactly the same, and the main difference is that this has a lift hill instead of a launch. That 100 foot drop puts it 7th in height and speed, 2.8 miles per hour faster than Formula, and 353 feet longer, which ranks 9th. When Formula goes back into the station, these hyperspace warps have additional twists and turns before hitting the brakes. It does cover track a little more slowly, ranking 7th. In 8th place with 39 seconds is Hal's Uber Cope, a suspended thrill coaster at Tripsdrill in Germany. This thing looks amazing, the revised version of their suspended looping coaster, just way smoother and with better restraints. It's 8th in ride time, as well as drop, speed, and length, but up at 6 in pacing thanks to its low to the ground elements. It has 3 inversions, 2 zero g rolls and 1 inline twist. These are inversions that don't require the train to rise up and slow down. Also, as a side note, the train only seats 20 people, but they're spaced out over 10 cars, so it looks a mile long. In 7th place with 40 seconds is Let Coaster, a Bermuda Blitz at Legendia in Poland. I admit, I was surprised to see where it ranks in height. I always thought this was a really small scale coaster, but it's all the way up at 3rd, at 131 feet. That's not all that tall when comparing it to other types of elite coasters. It's just about the same height as Twisted Colossus, if you wanted to make a comparison. So that's a good height to get a ride going. It's also 4th in speed, and only 7th in length. So a fast ride without a long track length. You know what that means. It's got very good pacing. And there it is, ranking 2nd. About a half foot per second away from being on top. It's another Vekoma that thrives being low to the ground, with its 3 inversions being a reverse sidewinder to start off, and then 2 corkscrews. Maybe this could have used more track because it comes in at under 3,000 feet. But sometimes it's better to end something early before it gets sluggish. In 6th place with 43 seconds is the Top Gun Coasters in China. There are 5 of these under construction, all in China. And this is one model where we don't know a lot of the stats. We know how long it is, and I was able to take out the track that I needed from one that was already built. But we don't know the max height or the top speed. Based on the rendering, the high point of the ride is that unique rollover camelback after the launch. An inversion that turns into a swooping drop to the ground. And I'm going to guess it's about 110 feet tall with a max speed of 55 miles per hour. If that's wrong and you know the right numbers, let me know in the comments below. That would put it at 5th in height and 6th in speed. We have a solid number on the length, and we can use the official Vekoma animation to calculate the ride time, so we know it's 6th in length, and all the way up at number 1 in pacing. Usually, animations are very close to reality, and I'm hoping the same applies to these Top Gun coasters. A sidewinder and two corkscrews round out the foreign versions on this compact, rapid-fire coaster model, 
Something that I think would appeal to a lot of American parks if they'd bring it overseas. In fifth place with 53 seconds is Wrath of Zeus, a firestorm at Vin Wonders in Vietnam. This is a big 10 second jump from the Top Gun coasters. This one also having a launch, leading into a 164 foot outside top hat, making this the tallest coaster on the list. Its top speed of 71.5 miles per hour also makes it the fastest of the bunch. It's got a solid third place ranking in length and pacing also. This is arguably the best new age Vekoma. The stats seem to back that up. Although the ride time does pale in comparison to a couple of other types, but it brings the intensity better than perhaps anything else on here. It packs in three inversions, a heartline roll, a vertical loop, and a corkscrew. The loop is a good touch, since those are uncommon on new age Vekomas, but that does slow down the train a little bit. In fourth place with 58 seconds is Tron Light Cycle Power Run, a custom launch coaster at Shanghai Disneyland. This is one of the most visually amazing coasters in the world, and it may be the least extreme coaster on the list, since it doesn't have any inversions, but it does hit a top speed of 59.3 miles per hour, all the way up at third. It reaches heights of 78 feet, with no real drop to speak of, and that 78 feet lands at second to last. It's fifth in length and eighth in pacing, but unlike the other coasters, the ride experience is secondary. The feeling of riding those Tron motorcycles, with all the neon lights around you, is the main draw. So a fast-moving, long-duration, family-friendly ride is what they were going for, and that's what they got. In third place with 66 seconds is Battlestar Galactica, a custom dual launch coaster at Universal Studios Singapore. Before Intimate started doing it, Vekoma unleashed this half-sit-down, half-inverted dueling launch coaster, one called Cyclone and one called Human. These have identical 66-second ride times, and the rest of the stats are very close. Each of these start off going up their lift hills very slowly, but then it starts picking up speed about a quarter of the way up, so it has some momentum going over that 140-foot lift hill. Good for second place. It's fourth in length and fifth in speed, but if you've seen the POV of this ride, it's painfully slow in a few spots. The only coaster that ranks lower in pacing is Stingray. It's an interesting concept, but the ride itself looks like it could use some help. It just has way too many dead spots. In second place with 74 seconds is Abyssus, a shockwave at Energylandia in Poland. I could not believe how long this ride lasted on the POV. It just seemed to never end. 74 seconds on a launch coaster is pretty wild. It launches up to 62.1 miles per hour, the second fastest on the list, climbs a top hat 126 feet in the air, good for fourth, and then embarks on the longest course of any New Age Vekoma, over 4,000 feet of prime ride track, and it ranks a solid fifth in pacing. For a larger park, the Shockwave is a great model, and if the Firestorm isn't Vekoma's best, then it's gotta be the Shockwave. It may be a little less intense, but it's such a long ride, 1 minute and 14 seconds is pretty crazy for a launch coaster. In first place with 77 seconds is FLY, a flying coaster at Fantasialand in Germany. Funny story about this, there's only one POV I found on Screamscape, and it fades out before it hits the brakes, so I'm assuming it fades out at the end of the ride at the 77 second mark. Apparently the park had YouTube take down all the other POVs that people had shot, so it was very hard to clock the ride. But this is the first launch flying coaster ever, and it took Fantasialand years to build it finally opening in 2020. I couldn't find any height stats on this, so I'll rank it last, since it doesn't seem to get very high off the ground. It also has a top speed of 48.5 miles per hour, good for second to last, and is also ninth in pacing. But looking at that 77 seconds of ride time, there's no shock that it's second in length. FLY isn't supposed to be an intense, rip your face off coaster. It's supposed to take you on a flight through the extensive theming of Rookburn, which looks amazing, in typical Fantasialand fashion. This has a similar objective of Tron, Take riders on a long journey, and immerse yourself in the whole experience. That's it for new generation Vekomas, by the numbers. Let me know if anything here surprised you, or confirmed something you thought you already knew. Sound off in the comments below. I was impressed by the length of Abyssus and FLY. Those POVs just seemed to go on forever, and I would have guessed before doing this that they were on the shorter side. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like, and subscribe if you're new here and love coasters, and check out my playlist for other Prime Ride Time videos. And if you want to join my Discord server and talk with other fans of the channel, or check out my second channel, where I post copyright-free off-ride footage, those links are down below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.